welcome to another ARC review. Today we will be discussing the new release from Quill and Crow Publishing House, the Rituals and Grimoires collection. It's a collection of eight magical tales, each with their own unique sense of unease, featuring witches, worlds beyond worlds, magic and the dead. I have to say that I'm not sponsored, I'm not paid, and I was sent this for a free ARC review for just a 100% honest opinion. So how I'm going to do this is by going through each individual tale and just saying a little bit about each of them without giving too much away because I don't want to spoil anything. We don't do spoilers here. So the first one is entitled Liber Mortis, um, I hope I said that right, and it traces the life of a powerful grimoire book and the variety of people whose hands it passes through and touches. Although this was probably my least favourite of the collection because I found it kind of confusing and it was a little bit hard to follow because I was too busy consciously trying for it to make sense and flow rather than allowing it to unconsciously let everything go and just let it be. I was too busy actively trying for it to make some kind of sense. Although I did find that reading it twice really, really helped. It was just that first initial, you think, what, how, what, uh... But the second time round, it did make a lot more sense. Although I do like the idea that books have their own consciousness. I do like the idea of the, having their own consciousness, rather like houses can, and that they can be imprinted on by the people who are in them, who, do, who own them, or whose hands they pass through. So this next one is my third favourite. It is a very close to the second one. And this one is called The Witch Elm Women. Um, it's a wonderful, eerie tale of what can happen when magic is taken, not given, and the immeasurable difference between those two little words. This one I felt was the most heart-wrenching. It really got me in the gut. And I really felt the emotions that the Maggie character was experiencing in real time. And while the romantic in me really hoped, really hoped for a happy ending for her, it really outlined the grief you feel when the one that you love is no longer there to reach out and touch in the dark. So the next one is entitled Speaking to Shades. It's... A haunting trip to the fountain of possibilities in dangerous territory where no one is as they seem and in a journey where you need your guide to help you can you really trust the one whom you have no other choice so in this we follow Sebastian and he leads priest Riemann and his disciples to a fountain in the mountains where you can recover what has been most lost to you I really enjoyed this one and I did feel like it was sort of a snippet of a bigger world, like a story that's part of a bigger story. Because so, you had, um, I think there was a, a reference to a battle going on above them and they get some of the fallout of that, uh, but it's sort of going on around them and not really impacting them. So it's more like, while all this war is going on, they are sort of in it, but not the main characters of what is going on in the bigger picture. And I, I really liked that. And I would like to read more of the world that's going on around them. So the fourth one is The Warlock and the Crow. And I really liked the imaginative possibilities in this one. We follow the perspective of West, a woman who can turn into a crow at her master's bequest. It's refreshing to only have 
You have more than an outline, but you don't have the whole picture for this, and it does keep you guessing, which I really, really liked. It leaves more questions than answers, but not in a bad way. It does it really, really well, and the way it's written does it really, really well. And by the end, I felt that I wanted more of the story. I wanted to know what happened with West and her dark vampire companion. But I wanted more of this. It could have been a whole novel on its own with an expanded branch out quest, however it could have been. But I did want more of it. So the next one is A Spider in Place of the Heart. And having spent time alone at the coast, at Whitby no less, I can fully imagine some black magic at work underneath the ruins on that cliff. Waiting and awakening with the right help. In this tale, we follow Elaine as she embarks on an outing to relieve the boredom that she faces and she ends up unleashing an ancient evil. I really liked the imagery that was written in this and it firmly placed it as one to revisit on a dark and stormy night with rain lashing the windows next to you. And I most certainly will be revisiting it. So I really liked the the black cloak. I liked the idea of going through old family heirlooms, trinkets. You know, you find a big trunk, say, in the attic and it has things in it that you've never seen, a whole history that you don't know. And because it's your own family, you feel that blood connection pull. Every object holds a memory. Not all of them are benevolent. And not all will be as they seem. I thoroughly enjoyed this dark little outing where we follow Thea Miller as she goes through her recently deceased uncle's belongings, the house, it's been left to her, and she happens to discover a powerful item locked away, which she unlocks. And this unearths a powerful secret deep in the woods, which was better left buried. So the seventh one is entitled Madness and Mercy and it's a quick tale of two brothers who are complete opposites. Um, their family was split down the middle. The main character stayed with the father and his brother went with his mother and they were split because of the parental views on the use of magic and whether just because you have the power doesn't mean you should use it. So in this we follow one brother's quest to find his other brother after his other brother asks him for help. And we follow him through dark forbidding forests and a village holding a secret. And you should tread carefully in this one because not only the living walk the roads of that village. Now the last one is by far my favourite of the entire collection and I've reread it I would say about four times now. Um, I, I can't say how much I really really like this one. This tale it twists like a spiral staircase leading you ever downwards into the shadows and the dark. I felt comfort in the descriptions of the crypt and how Isidore felt as a child going down there and how he felt the kinship of all those that had gone before him. Further on, I was crying out for vengeance at what the despicable characters were doing to him and I found myself smiling deliciously, gleefully even, at the perfect, 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 perfect ending of this one. With this one, now it strikes me as more, it could be like, it had echoes of Renfield from Dracula, sort of how he could have been as a child. And I really liked the perspective it would hold. So I have to admit that some of these tales snared my imagination 
more than the others, some in quite a large degree. I already have returned and reread it a couple of times. I really liked the presentation of these stories and the way that they were in order because it didn't, although they were different, it didn't jolt you back to reality whenever you finished one, which some short story collections can do. You finish it and then think, oh yeah, I was reading. Oh yeah, I was. What am I? Who am I doing? Where am I? What year is it? This didn't have that, and although the stories don't like flow into each other because they're not by the same people, they do connect enough that you can just read the whole of it in quick succession and you don't need a break. The overall atmosphere really set the tone. I liked how the atmospheres were written in each tale. I think the authors did a wonderful job of getting that across on paper. The sort of dark, shadowy little niggles and the bonus of little spells before each chapter really set the magical tone of the entire book. So for me this book had a rating of four stars out of five. I really really liked, I, I liked reading it. I enjoyed myself reading it. And as always please like, subscribe, drop a comment down below if this would interest you. I will have the link down below for Amazon if you want to buy it yourself. I like I said, I'm not paid, I'm not sponsored, but if a book is good, I want people to read it. As always, keep reading. <laughs>